This is Evangelist Henry Walker. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. I want to start a new message today talking about how we need to get ready for victory and the spoils that are connected to that victory. But let's go to the Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want, Father. Let me say only what you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. Father, help people to open up their spirits and not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 53. It's a familiar chapter for many of you. Again, we're talking about how we need to get ready for the victory in whatever situation we've been facing and to receive the spoils that are connected to that victory. The greatest example of somebody going through and getting victory and giving the spoils is Yeshua in Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, right before Jeremiah, after Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Isaiah 53, verse 3, talking about Yeshua. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Verse 4, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the Father and afflicted. Maybe some of you are still carrying griefs and sorrows. The Father wants to give you victory over those once and for all and give you his spoils. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And Peter said later on that by his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Because of what Yeshua did, the Father said in verse 12, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He's dividing the spoils with the strong, and that's us. We are strong in him and the power of his might. We've got to stand strong against this world system, against the things that are happening in the world against these crazy people with these crazy ideas that try to teach children these crazy ideas. It's important that we stand and mothers and fathers, make sure the children tell you exactly what they were taught during the class that day. And be careful what some of these teachers would like to teach. The attack is over the children right now. So strong. A lot of people are under attack, but especially the children right now. And it's that control from the world system. But we see he divided the spoils with us, the strong, because we are strong. Like I said, strong in him. As a result of him getting that victory for us, remember, he was born on Passover, died on Passover. This is his birthday, what he did for us on his birthday. He gave spoils to us. He gave gifts to us. In chapter 54, verse 1, Sing, O barren, thou that did not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said Yahweh. Enlarge the place of your tent. Dream big. Let him stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Whatever he gives you, hold on to it. Stand. Remember Jonathan and his armor bearer. They went against the enemy. Just the two of them. And they took this half acre of ground and killed 20 of the enemy. They took that ground and held on to that ground. Then Yahweh moved. There was a trembling. He caused an earthquake and wiped out the rest of the enemy. But they had to hold on to what the Father gave them. The Father's ready to bless us. And we need to hold on to those blessings. And He's only going to bless us if our spiritual character can uphold the blessings. So many people talk about prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. But what about the soul prospering? All these ministers on mainstream TV, do they ever talk about repentance and allowing the Father to prosper us spiritually? So we need to turn our flesh over to the Father. We need to surrender everything to the Father. Ask Him to come into our spirit, 
fill us with the Spirit, make us more like Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives. It's so important. And every day he works on us. A spiritual operation is what he does, strengthening us and pointing out things in our lives that he wants to get rid of. And as you allow him to do that, then the blessings in the natural just come and they overflow our way. In verse 3, for you, we shall break forth on the right hand and on the left, and our seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for you shall not be put to shame, for you shall forget the shame of your youth, and shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. So we can see that the victory that Yeshua wrought was a victory for us too, because he made a way for us to get to heaven, and we can approach the Father in the name of Yeshua. And that's the greatest victory, to spend eternal life with him. You go to Second Chronicles chapter 14 with me. Just keep going back, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, Psalms, Job, Esther, Nehemiah, Ezra, 2 Chronicles chapter 14. It's so great after a victory, you get the spoils. The tougher the victory, the greater the spoils. The longer it takes to get a victory, the greater the spoils. So some of you have been concerned about something that happened years and years and years ago. It doesn't matter, the Father's going to give you the victory and the spoils. In 2 Chronicles 14, Asa, in verse 2, it said that he did what was good and right in the eyes of the Father. In verse 9, against the army of Asa, Zira the Ethiopian, with a host of a million men, came against Asa and Mary Shah. In verse 10, then Asa went out against them, and he set the battle in the raid of the valley of Zephathah at Mary Shah. So here, there's going to be a battle. And when we have surrendered everything to the Father and we go through a battle, that means spoils are coming our way. In 2 Chronicles 20, we may get to it later on. Remember, Jehoshaphat was attacked, he was surrounded, and all the Father told him to do is send out your praise and worship leaders in the battle and sing, Praise Yahweh, His mercy endures forever. And as they did, the Father set up an ambush put against him and they killed each other and all Jehoshaphat had to do is get the spoils of the victory. He didn't have to fight. So many of our battles, we don't have to fight. We just got to watch the father win for us. The father told David, coming against Goliath, that the battle is not yours, it's mine. And in verse 11, Asa cried unto Yahweh. What a beautiful prayer. And he said, Yahweh, it is nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Yahweh, for we rest on you. And in thy name we go against this multitude, Yahweh, for you are our Elohim. Let not man prevail against you. So Yahweh smote the Ethiopians. As a result of that prayer, in chapter 12, the first word is so. As a result of Asa's prayer, Yahweh smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gera, and the Ethiopians were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves. For they were destroyed before Yahweh and before his host, and they carried away very much spoil. Are you ready for the victory? Are you ready for the spoils that attach to that victory? Just say yes to Yahweh. If you surrendered everything to him, he's going to give you victory after victory and spoils after spoils. Verse 14, And he smote all the cities around about Gara, for the fear of Yahweh came upon them. And he spoiled all the cities, for there was much exceeding spoil in them. Remember, you're not fighting alone. He's with you. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. They smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance and returned to Jerusalem. What a victory. What spoils. You want me to Psalm 1, the first Psalm? Let's go to the right to Psalms. Psalms 1, right after Job, right before Proverbs. We're talking about victory and spoils. So many of you have been standing on his word, surrendering everything to the Father on a daily basis, and you're having battles, but you're standing strong with him. But get ready for the spoils. The people of the world get kind of blessed, quote unquote, but it's nothing compared to what Yahweh can bless because those blessings disappear. But Yahweh's blessings are forever. No weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. And every tongue that comes in judgment against us, we, we shall condemn. In Psalm 1 and verse 2, For his delight is in 
the Lord Yahweh, and in his Lord does he meditate day and night. It's so much better to meditate on his word and his promises rather than meditate on the things that are happening on the news. The mainstream news media is not going to report the news they're supposed to report. They're only going to report the news that they want you to hear so they can control you. It's all about control. We've been talking on the last several podcasts about this world system. How we're in the world but not of the world. And, and they want to take ownership of so many people away from the Father. But you got to stand strong and put the whole armor on you. Having your loins good about with truth. Having a breastplate of righteousness. Your feet sharp the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having on the helmet of salvation. Having the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. The bubble will have the shield of faith where we can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Every day, cover yourself with the blood. Your children, cover your children with the blood before they leave the house, before they go to sleep at night. So many people in their minds are perverted and they're trying to pervert children. So pray for children in general. Again, you parents have a tremendous responsibility. Remember, they're your children, not the school system. They're your children. They're supposed to do their part and, and teach the children things that will benefit them later on as they become adults, but the children belong to you. And this world wants to take ownership of your children, stand strong, and when they're home, study the word together, pray together as a family, encourage them. There's so much coming at them. And as I mentioned on some previous podcasts, this control started with this pandemic. I'm not saying these controls are wrong. I'm saying that it was a great opportunity for the world system to start controlling people. Couldn't go into the store and buy anything without a mask. Kids couldn't go to school at first. Kids couldn't go to school without a mask later on. Couldn't get on a plane without being vaccinated. Like a preview of what the mark of the beast will be. And remember, as I mentioned on a previous podcast, the mark of the beast is surrendering everything to the beast. And his name will be in people's foreheads, in their minds, and he gives them some power in their right hand. But the mark of the Father, is we have the Father's name in our minds, and he gives power, unbelievable power. Yet yeah, all his powers at our disposal, if he wants to use it to bless us in our lives. And I'm telling you right now, he is blessing us with spoils. We've been through the water, and we've been through the fire, and he's bringing us out into a wealthy place. In verse 3, and we shall be like trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth our fruit in our season. Our leaves also shall not wither. And whatever we do shall prosper. There are the spoils. Because we delight in him. We meditate on his law. His word. Chapter 2. Psalm 2. And verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine the vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh, against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. But Yahweh, he that sits in heaven, shall laugh. He shall have them in derision. Then he's going to speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Remember, at the Red Sea, Yahweh looked out of the pillar of cloud. One look drove the Egyptians crazy. And that one look broke the chariot wheels and they all drowned it, horses included. One look. One look. One look from Yahweh. And it's over. I'm not saying he's going to kill them, but their influence in your life will be broken. In verse 8, he said, Ask of me, and I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. They're the spoils. The wealth of the sinners laid up for us to trust. And the other ones passed the earth for our possession. Why? Because he gave us the victory, now he's given us the spoils. He went to battle for us, and now he's given us the spoils. All he wants us to do in battles that are around him, concerning him, is stand still on his word. And watch him move for us. In chapter 3, Psalm 3, verse 1. Yahweh, how are they that increase that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Maybe you feel like that. Maybe this pressure is closing in on you. But the Father is not going to give you anything more than you can take. And by the temptation or the pressure, he'll provide a way for you to escape. So that you might bear it. And many there be which say of my soul, there's no help for him in Yahweh. But verse 3, but thou, Yahweh, are a shield for me, your presence and the lifter up of my head. There's a promotion. There's being lifted up on high. Some of you are wondering why you haven't been promoted on your job. The set time to favor you is now. Psalm 102, verse 13. The set time 
to favor you is now. Receive that word. Whatever, whoever's trying to stop you, it's out of the way. The Father's going to move for you. Why? Because you belong to Him. You surrendered everything to Him. Verse 4, I cried unto Yahweh with my voice, and He heard me out of His holy hill. Say that. He always hears us. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, like I mentioned before. I laid me down and slept. I awake, for Yahweh sustained me. Sleep is beautiful. Sleep in Yahweh is so beautiful. Verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, Yahweh, save me. O my Yahweh, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of my enemies. Salvation belongs unto Yahweh. His blessing is upon us, his people. See, there's the spoils. Why? Because he is battling for us. He's going to win for us and give us the spoils. Just like he did when he hung up there for us and divided the spoils with us. He said, enlarge the place of your tent. Dream big. And let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. As we read before. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Get ready for enlargement. Get ready for expansion. Those of you in the ministry, he wants to expand your influence. You've been faithful over a few, he'll make you rule over many. Receive that. Whoever you are, receive that blessing that he's enlarging you in distress. And get ready for expansion, for enlargement. It's Psalm 4, verse 1. Hear me when I call, O Yahweh of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress, as I mentioned before. Have mercy upon me. And hear my prayer. Verse 3. For know that Yahweh has set us apart for him. Yahweh will hear when we call unto him. For you, Father, will bless us, the righteous, with favor, favor, favor. Wilt thou compass us as with a shield. There's the blessings. There's the spoils. Leave your enemies to the Father. I'm not saying he's going to kill them, but he will take away their influence away from your life. And bless you. And raise you up on high. Psalm 37. In verse 1. Fret not be thyselves because of evildoers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as a green herb. Some of you are probably saying, well, how, how come it hasn't happened yet? Well, the Father is working out a plan. He's trying to reach them, but if they keep saying no, 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 he'll just move to somebody else. But he wants to take that influence of the evil people away from your life. He wants to take the weeds out of your life like a beautiful flower in the garden. He wants to take those weeds away from you. They'll try to hinder your growth. And incidentally, I have a message on my website about divorce and remarriage. Read it. It's not based on any traditions. It's based upon a word, line upon line. So many people say you, people with divorce can't get remarried. But what if somebody made a bad decision, married the wrong person, and now have a divorce? Why wouldn't the father want them to marry the right person and be in agreement in prayer and reading the word, and the children being in agreement and reading the word. It's all tradition that doesn't want that to happen. Tradition is not of Yahweh. It's a great message, Divorce and Remarriage, on henrywalker.org, under written messages. And also there's a message on wine is a marker, the truth about wine. And there are two free books on the bottom of the message page. One is noon, talks about the feast days. We should all be learning more about the feast days. Yeshua is a Jew, was a Jew, always will be a Jew. And incidentally, this ministry goes back to the a Jewish roots in Yeshua as he taught the apostles. Not this other stuff with the ceremony washings and their laws. Yeah, 600 and some laws. No, we're talking about what the Father taught through Yeshua to the apostles. And the feast days. Every feast day has been fulfilled in Yeshua or will be fulfilled in Yeshua. And noon brings out every feast day. Plus on my website, every feast day is described. And also it has those pagan holidays. Everyone has pagan holidays with the pagan roots. It's important, if you want the Father to really bless you, make sure that anything that you believe and have brought into your relationship with the Father through Yeshua is in the Word. Not some tradition made by man. Not some tradition going back to Constantine. Because remember, we talked about that Constantine religion is the one world religion. And most beautiful believers believe in that. But I studied it just from tradition, 1,700 years of tradition, as we talked about in so many podcasts. In verse 4, we delight ourselves also in Yahweh, and he'll give us the desires of our heart. Those are blessings, spoils. He puts his desires in our spirit, 
And he fulfills those desires. Why? Because he put them there. He doesn't fulfill every desire that we have in our heart, but what he has put in our heart, in our spirit. Verse 10, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, that shall diligently consider their place, and it shall not be. In verse 11, But the meek shall inherit the earth. That's us. Those are the spoils. And we shall delight ourselves in the abundance of peace. Whether you know it or not, there's a battle out there. The spiritual bullets flying out there, not over around us, but there's a, a war out there. The world knows it's the last days and it's their last attempt. But again, no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. It's important you realize that the Father is allowing this war out there so more and more people will turn to him because nobody in the world can help him. No politician, no minister can help him. Only the, the Father, do you sure? And that's just the way the Father wants it. He's the one sitting on the throne, and he's allowing all this pressure so he can get the last person into the door of the rapture. Remember, there's one sitting on the throne. That's the Father in Yeshua. And the second book I have on my website is the Trinity Really a Mystery. The both of them are free. New and is the Trinity Really a Mystery. The bottom of the message page explains what the Trinity really is. So many beautiful believers are saying, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they're saying three gods, even though they don't mean it. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost, those titles are not even in the word. But Constantine, all his pagans worshipped three gods, so he wanted to bring that into Christianity. But he said, we know that the word says there's one, so we'll call these three gods to be one. It'll make it a mystery. <laughs> That's so it all originated. It's so laughable. But so many beautiful people have inherited that tradition but you got to ask the Father to get that junk out of your life and be willing to stand in the minority, knowing that the road to heaven is straight and narrow and few are found on it. The road to hell is wide and many are found on it. But the choice is up to you. This podcast is trying to let you know that we all have to study the word for ourselves. In verse 22, We that are blessed of Yahweh shall inherit the earth, and those that are cursed in him shall be cut off. Why is the Father blessing us with spoils? Because the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by Yahweh, and he delights in our way. Verse 29, The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The spoils, the spoils from victory are for us. Go to Revelation, book of Revelation. Get ready for the spoils. Don't look at the circumstances. Get ready for the Father to move. Look unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from Yahweh. And don't forget about the Sabbath, from Friday 6 p.m. to Saturday 6 p.m. He wants to draw us into his presence at a certain period of time during that time and refresh us for the week that we just finished and give us a brand new blessing power for the week that starts on Saturday at 6 p.m. Remember, the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. The 12 hours of the day are 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You should refer to these as the 12 hours of the day. And the 12 hours of the night are 6 p.m. The 6 a.m. The night watches. A message on my website about the night watches. How powerful they are. And incidentally, as I said in Lamentations 2 verse 19, cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches, which is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pour out your heart like water before the face of Yahweh. Lift up your hands towards him for the life of your young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Lamentations 2, verse 19. Take advantage of the night watches. Powerful times from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is the fourth watch of the night, the darkest part of the night, and that's when Yeshua walked on the water. He may wake you up during that 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. to pray for somebody who's going to maybe the darkest part of their life, to pray for them. In Revelation chapter 2, starting in verse 7, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the congregations. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of the Father. Wow, see, the spoils from overcoming, from getting the victory. Verse 26, And he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Look at the spoils. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. In chapter 3, verse 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white clothing, 
and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. In verse 12, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my father, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon the name of my father and the name of the city of my father, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my father, and I'll write upon him my new name. Look at those spoils, those blessings. In Revelation 17, verse 14, those who align with the beast in the end times shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Yahweh, the king of kings, and they that are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. This is why he is blessing us with spoils, because we've been through so many battles for him and with him against his enemies. And so now he's ready to reward us openly what we've done in secretly, what we allowed him to do in us in secretly. Before we go on, I want to remind some of you, and maybe some of you don't realize it, that this is a pro-life ministry. We believe that life begins at conception. Just some facts, the baby's heart begins to beat around 18 days. That's surely not a tissue. And around four months, the baby's heart is pumping about 25 quarts of blood per day. And most scientists believe that life begins at conception, as well as the College of Pediatrics. So we want to pray for the babies in the womb right now. Father, touch those babies in the womb. Bring them to a full birth, Father. And those people who have had an abortion that are listening out there, Father, help them to repent, ask you to forgive them, and go on and follow you, Father. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. So again, we're talking about receiving the spoils for the victory that the Father has given us and will give us. Again, some of you have been laboring in that hot sun, so to speak, spiritually. But as I mentioned before, Psalm 102.13, the set time to favor you is now. Say, the set time to favor all of us is now if we have surrendered everything to the Father. And also, and have asked Him to come into our spirits, fill us with the spirits, make us more like Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And also remember, on some prior broadcasts, I mentioned about if you're being attacked by your flesh in your mind with impure thoughts, fear, anxiety, say out loud, thank you, Yeshua, that you had that crown of thorns on your head. That was for me. My mind is covered by your blood. I only think your thoughts. It's important that you do that if you're under attack. If any of you want to email me with a question or a praise report, just email me at contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at henrywalker.org. I'll be so glad to hear from you. So if you enjoy these podcasts, tell other people about these podcasts, share, subscribe, hit the like button, and remember to next time, this is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, greater is the Father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than anything or anybody in the world.